Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. For today's cards, I am using a slightly older stamp set. This is Simon Says Stamps Botanical Heart stamp set. This came out a couple of releases ago and I had ordered it um, a month, six weeks ago, something. It has been sitting in my basket with a bunch of new products. <laughs> And today is actually part of a big blog party, just sharing ideas and inspiration using older stamp sets. So I couldn't resist pulling this one out because while it's a little bit older, a lot of you might already have it. And I couldn't resist because anyone who watches me knows I love big floral stamps. And this one is no exception. So I have my card base in my Misty. This is just a side folding A2 card made from Simon's 120 pound white cardstock. And I am stamping the large botanical heart with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink right onto my card front. I'm doing two cards because these are my sort of go-to. Again, anyone who watches me knows I love black, gold, and white together. I love making cards in that combo. It just, there's something just classy about it. So I stamped the fronts of both cards with the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. Then I just quickly cleaned off my stamp and I have black envelopes and I have the back of the envelope facing up. So I lined this up in my Misty and kind of centered that stamp on it. So this gives you an idea of just how big this stamp is. So I'm going to stamp the back of the envelope with this stamp and I use my anti-static powder tool and then I'm inking it up and stamping it with clear embossing ink. I'm not worried about it being perfect. I just want it stamped as great as I can get it. And then I'm going to coat this with uh, Simon's Detail Gold Embossing Powder. And then once I have that completely coated, and I'm making sure to kind of be careful to not get embossing powder like in the, the envelope, because that's the last thing you need is you go to melt it and it like basically seals the envelope shut. So I just poured on the embossing powder, tapped out the excess, and then I'm going to let my heat tool heat up for a few seconds first. And then I'm going to melt all of this embossing powder and... As always, it's just like magic when, meta especially metallic embossing powders, you know, when it melts and then like that metallic finish starts to really show up. It's just like, it's so satisfying. <laughs> so I did that to both envelopes, of course. So I stamped the back of both of them. And then since I've got the stamp out, I wiped it off again. And then I have the inside of the cards just laid out flat in my Misty here. And I'm going to line up the stamp. Usually I mask off, you know, what'll be the inner top or inner like left side of the card basically I normally I would mask that off but for this I thought it'd be perfect to stamp so when you open the card you see the full botanical heart so that's what I did and then I'm inking up the heart with uh, fossilized amber distress archival ink and this is a funny thing about yellowings I knew this but I wasn't really thinking until I actually did it even though I'd wiped off the stamp I hadn't properly cleaned it so the yellow ink picked up the little bit of remnants from the the black ink I used in the beginning but I was okay with that. I, one, I always say I don't need the insides of my cards to be perfect, but also it just worked. I don't know. There was just something about it, the way it kind of picked it up and created almost like a mottled color. And it's so, and also it wasn't as bright as it naturally is. So that is something though, if you ink up a stamp with yellow ink and you find it ain't stamping yellow, <laughs> it's it's because your stamp is still dirty. So a really good cleaner, clean it really well, like stamp, Simon's Ultra Clean, etc. cetera. Like you clean the stamp really well. Or also another option is to have a throwaway um, yellow stamp pad that you use to just ink up stamps to help clean them. Because there's something about yellow pigments that just seem to kind of pick up the other colors. So random tip of the day. Anywho. Um, by this point, the VersaFine Claire Nocturne that I stamped on the front of the cards is completely dry. I like took a break, fed the kids lunch, etc. So this had a lo nice long time to really fully dry because this ink does take longer at times, especially when stamped like on a smooth surface like this cardstock. And of course, I wanted it to be really dry because I wanted to stamp the, lo the long straight set of lines in the set along this. And I stamped it with the clear embossing ink. I made sure to use... A liberal amount of my anti-static powder first. Stamp that with the clear embossing ink and then I'm using that same gold embossing powder to um, melt with that. So I've got these nice gold lines because again gold black and white I just I love it. I actually went through my videos and did a playlist that I'll link to at the end with all the videos I've done using gold black and white and there's a lot more than I thought there would be. <laughs> so yeah it is a favorite. 
So I did the exact same thing with the second card, just lined up. I used my Misty Creative Corners to um, arrange the card inside my Misty, like off of the edges, so I could stamp that stamp. And then I also took a piece of black cardstock and I'm lining it up. This took a little bit of extra fiddling, but I was just curious to see if I could pull it off. So I, I lined up two stamps here, one on top of the other. I have the one of the little circle outline stamps from that set, as well as the sentiment, because the sentiments are made to kind of fit within those little borders of the circles. So I lined it up in the corner. So I have the sentiment in kind of the upper left, and then the circle in what will be the lower right of this piece because then I can rotate it and I'll have everything lined up and stamped so that I don't have to stamp, heat emboss, line up, stamp, do this again. It just makes it a lot quicker. And if I was to do like, you could do so many of these cards and I was just thinking these would be great because you could never have enough thank you cards. I've been saying that forever. But especially now, if you want to make like a whole bunch of thank you cards with some like doing something like this, this would be a way that, to kind of mass produce you know, a bunch of them. So I did that. And then I ended up doing, before I even added the embossing powder, I took another sentiment, the thank you sentiment from the set, lined that up. And then I just rotated the cardstock again so I could stamp it a second time. And yeah, if I was going to do like multiple, multiple, multiples, I would just keep putting in cardstock, stamping, putting in cardstock, stamping, and you could end up with like a ton in very little time. So now everything's got the gold embossing powder on it. So I can just quickly melt this with my heat tool. So I've got two sentiments with the little border um, frame around them. And then just two that say, just thank you. I didn't add the border frame to those ones. So I melted those with my heat tool. And then I do have the coordinating wafer dies for this. Those were a newer um, release because the demand was so high. So Simon released that with their last release back in March, I think. So I have those. So I'm just going to use the circle ones though for this card, but there's like the large one to die cut out that heart. There's an extra one that says, um, it's a sentiment that says love you and then a heart to cut out the heart image in the set. And then just a couple extra hearts, which is kind of nice. So I just use the circles to cut out these sentiments and the one with the frame I'm adhering to the card front with just some thin 3d foam squares. And then the thank you sentiments, I'm just adding craftaculu to those and then adhering those to the insides of these cards. And then once those are adhered, I'm going to add some bling because I can't not add bling, of course. So I pulled out my still and probably always will be until, you know, I'm sure someday they'll be discontinued, but hopefully never. <laughs> the Studio Cadia Golden Sparkle Crystals, which so they're clear with gold glitter in them, which just makes me happy. And then I also pulled out some onyx crystals just to, you know, bring in that little bit of extra black. So sprinkled those onto both of these cards and then I'm just adhering them into place with some craft tacky glue and using my little embellishment wand to pick them up. So once those are adhered, both of these cards and their matching envelopes are complete. So I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have a supply list with links to all the supplies used. You can check that all out. Like I said in the beginning, this is part of a huge blog party. I'll have a link in my blog post to the Simon Says Stamp blog because I'm not even joking. There's a ton, like I think there's over a hundred people participating in this. So I'll have a link to theirs and they'll have a list with all the links so you guys can hop around and just check out all of the inspiration. I'm sure there's gonna be a whole bunch more videos and pictures and just so much fun stuff. So check that out if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.